Hello my wonderful viewers and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Overanalyzes. Today we are going to take a fun little look at a theory or thought I had while watching Transformers Earth Sparks. Not to bury the lead, but is the Malto family line, the paternal line coming from the Philippines, super powered inherently in some way or the other? Now I will be getting into spoilers pro through most of season one. So for, for the first, most of the first 10 episodes of season one, rather. And so I'm going to give you all a chance to click away if you don't want to have any spoilers. You can go check out the links below my video, get a copy of my book, Humans Are Weird. I have the data, Humans Are Weird, We Took a Vote, or Humans Are Weird, Let's Work It Out, available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo by Rakuten, Google Books, anywhere books are sold, basically. So go check that out now if you don't want any spoilers. Now, are the Maltos, is the Malto bloodline super powered? This is a Transformers show, and it is at its heart science fiction, and not superhero science fiction either. You do get the occasional crossover, but for the most part, the humans in Transformers franchises are just that, humans. They have, they have general human strength and without mechanical intervention can't fly or do anything super powered. But the Transformers universe also allows for a certain amount of magic, crystals with special powers, aliens, and the occasional mythical beast. In this iteration of the franchise, this takes the form of the Walk Walk, a, bl a blood-sucking vampire dragon basically thing either a, gi a giant crow that can transform into a into a beast it sometimes it has leather wings and a woman's face and a crow's body it's a traditional mythical beast from the philippines but the walk walk is not where this story begins it begins at the very beginning of the series after we see Optimus have his first fight with the Decepticons, when we're introduced to the Maltos, they have their family dinner at home, their mom and mom and Mo are having a thumb wrestling match, which is cute and adorable, and you know, nothing that sticks out at you. Then the runaway scene happens, and Mo, and Mo and Robbie are in that cave. And Mo bends down and picks up a rock the size of her head. And if you noticed, her head is unnaturally large anyway. But then that rock is as big as her head. Now, I have spent a lot of my career moving rocks from one place to another. I, as a full-on adult, would not pick up that rock. I wouldn't even try. I'd get either get somebody to help me, load, and I we definitely load it into a tractor to move it. But she hefts it up onto her shoulder by herself. Then, when she drops it in the cave rocks, they lampshade this. And her brother says, easy there, John Henry. Now, if you know anything about the legend of John Henry, he, it's, it's a bit of American folklore. John Henry was working on the railroads just as they were transitioning from humans with sledgehammers driving in spikes to a machine driving in spikes. Well, the railroad company got this machine in that was, and it was going to use it to replace all the workers. And the railroad company was going to uh, basically not pay the workers the contract that they'd signed. They were going to short the workers. So John Henry declared that he could outwork any machine and he struck a deal with the head of the pay department that if he could beat that machine then in, in, in driving spikes then the railroad company would have to pay up the rest of the workers and the 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 test happens, John Henry wins by a hair and dies of a heart attack at the end. But the rest of his, the rest of his company uh, get, get their pay and get their contracts paid out. It's a cl classic American story, relevant to the situation, but it is lampshading the fact that Mo had just shown fantastic strength. Because of every, all the weird stuff that's going on around them, Robbie doesn't think much about it. But I was looking at her lift that rock, and I was completely willing to ignore it. It's a Transformers show franchise, after all. And every franchise is allowed one great leap away from reality. And the one that we allow for the Transformers is the, the, that branch of physics which has to do with material, science, weight, mass, and volume. Everybody's seen the, the original G1 Megatron transforming down into a pistol. Where did all the extra mass go? There's entire theories about that, and the Ravage and Frenzy transforming into cassettes. 
and the fact that these Autobots and Decepticons are these giant two-story tall robots but can still walk around in, on, in human architecture and get into buildings and the time that the Autobots fooled the Decepticons by wearing lab coats and pretending to be the human employees at the factory. My point being, this show has always played fast and loose with the laws of physics. So even though it was clearly obvious that Mo was definitely lifting out of her weight class in that scene, I was prepared to ignore it until the John Henry comment. Until she was compared to a human with essentially superhuman strength, but still within... John Henry didn't have superpowers. He was just as strong as a man could physically be. He, like Batman, prime physical condition. Born with good genes, spent his whole life doing this one specific kind of hard labor. So he was like primed for, primed for that competition. But he was still essentially superhuman compared to the average, definitely. I'm like, oh, that's weird. The show made a point of pointing out Moe's exceptional strength here. Well, I wonder what that's about. And then I kind of forgot about it because I think I noticed that in light when I was like watching the trailer. And so that, so I'd kind of stopped thinking about it. And then I kind of accepted the sort of ethos of the series and I was jumping in. But then other things started. Other things struck me. In the episode moving in, and I'm going, I'm, going to, I'm going to get a couple of videos out of that episode, but Mom and Pop Malto go down to the lumber store for some wood to make some alterations to the house. When they get back, Mo, Mo is wrestling with Th Th Thrash. Now, Thrash could have easily been throwing the fight. Obviously, I mean, they're siblings. He wants to play with her. When two, and even when two rats play together, the larger rat is going to let the smaller rat win 30% of the time, or the smaller rat won't play with the larger rat. The scientists have done tests on this. So it really doesn't stand out that much that Mo won the fight with Thrash, unless it does. Obviously, Thrash was just playing, and he threw the fight and tapped out when she was yanking on his leg because, you know, he's a good brother. He's playing. But, in, so that may or may not be a bit of evidence towards the superpower and Maltos thing. But we turn around, and we see Mom and Pop Maltos st standing there in the classic. They just got their kid doing the thing they explicitly told the kid not to do stance. And Pop Maltos just looks so disappointed. And he's holding lumber in his arm. He is holding two 4x4s and two 2x4s. Actually, I think those might even be 4x6s. But anyway, there you can tell, it's hard to tell exactly from the angle, but they're somewhere between 6 and 10 feet long. I have worked in construction for a good bit. I know what a 4x4 weighs. I know what a 2x4 two, two weighs. That's a lot of weight. And he's standing there holding it casually in one hand, and he's not even shifted his weight to balance for it. He's just holding it lightly in one hand. And then he drops it, and the scene moves on. Then at the close of that story arc, we see that he's also moved two massive tractor tires around with apparently without the help from either of the bots. Now, in the case of Mo lifting that giant rock, that was just impossible. A girl of her size could not naturally lift that rock. It's a little bit less clear here with Pop Malto, but he's an academic. He's a history major. Yes, he does he does the stick work for that Filipino fighting style, but he's not going to. He doesn't have a job that keeps him in shape, and yet he's hefting around. 2x4s two by four, two by and 4x4s four by like he's a professional contractor. This shows an exceptional level of strength, as does moving around those tractor tires. A tractor tire that we saw the, ro the robots throwing around, but again, they're super, super heavy if you've ever tried to move them. And again, this is the Transformers universe. Their great leap away from reality, the one thing we accept from them is that we don't pay too much attention to the laws of physics because you need to fit a two-story robot into a, into a human life. Now, then we have the episode after moving in and okay. All right. No, that was from House Rules. I'm sorry. The lumber, the lumber scene was from House Rules, the fourth episode. In the third episode, moving in, you have another scene that made me chuckle hysterically. Not, not hysterically, but it, I got a good chuckle out of it. And at the time, I just accepted it as 
Transformers physics spending. In this scene, the Maltos, with the aid, help of Bumblebee, have to herd some cows, which is, which is a fun concept. They're dealing with fairly tame beef cow, dairy, I think they're dairy cows, they might be beef cows. Anyway, they're dealing with some fairly tame cows. They get, they get out of the fence, they panic, they've got to get them back in. And rather than, and unable to repair the fence, they use two of those big round hay bales, you know, the ones that are giant, like eight feet across and eight feet tall. And they roll, they place them at the break to keep the cows from getting out, which is a fairly good, good if temporary idea. And it's no surprise that Bumblebee can lift it. But then you have Robbie Malto pushing a, one of those bales slightly uphill into place. Now, I don't know if you've ever dealt with one of these bales before. Those things are heavy. I'm not sure of the exact weight, but they weigh a lot. The sheer weight holds them down. And because they're made of straw, they can flatten it a little easily. A, no human being could possibly roll one of those things unless it was basically on a downhill slope. Maybe under optimal conditions, but a scrawny ladies boy like Robbie, nah, it's not happening. There is no humanly way it's possible for Robbie to move that bale. So we have two options here. Either Robbie has some sort of super strength, either granted him from the bond with the others, but they didn't, Mo showed her super strength before the bond. Or as a Transformer show, it's just blatantly ignoring the laws of physics. And this, whoever wrote this particular scene has never tried to move one of those bales. So which is it? Now it could be either, but now we have three distinct incidences of Maltos showing super strength. So what's going on here? Then you have the fight with the Arachnomex. Now, if a full, the full grown Transformers don't have much trouble with these Arachnomex, but they can swarm them in large numbers. And in the scene about in in the traditions episode where we learn about the walk walk and I'll be getting back to the walk walk don't you worry about that we see Pop Malto and Robbie Malto going at these arachnomex with sticks and they are now those bamboo sticks are pretty tough and these arachnomex are robots so they're not just solid balls of steel they've got delicate wiring inside it looks like the, their outer framework isn't that strong, but they are tough enough to take out Transformers. And, and yet, these two humans managed to literally beat them back with, with sticks. Now, a stick is a pretty handy weapon when you need to mess something up, but they're consistently doing it and striking pretty severe blows. So, what's going on here? Where does this come from? Now, we have one more hint. In the series about tradition, we learn that Alex Malto, Pop Malto's Lolo, his grandfather, fought a walk walk and got and rescued the stolen child. Now, part even Pop Malto treats this as not as fake, but as a legend, as a myth, as a story. History professors are really good at it. They're really good at getting into the spirit of a story, but not necessarily treating it as, as an exact historical reference. But when Pop Malto is talking to Bumblebee, Bumblebee goes, <gasps> Witwicky has a wot walk? And Bumblebee treats the wot walk as a real and present threat, something that he has faced. And it turns out Bumblebee's been in the Philippines, and it sounds like that Bumblebee has personally fought a walk walk, meaning that this mythical beast does exist, meaning that Pop Malto, the story of Pop Malto's Lolo fighting the walk walk is probably in this instance closer to history than myth. So you have a grandfather going up against a vampire bird that's tough enough to get a, start, a frightened start out of a full-sized transformer. You have the, a massive moment of lamp shading where you have a small child lifting a wooler she physically could not lift in real life and the, her display of strength being commented on with a reference to a nice superhuman folk character in folklore. You have Pulp Molto throwing around lumber like he's a professional bodybuilder when he's a professional academic. You have Robbie Malto rolling around bales of hay that you have to get special attachments for your tractor to move. 
uh, and all of that descending from a line of the of the walk walk fighter. Uh, lo lo lolo. So, here's my theory. Grant, it, let's see, it would be their great grandpa Malto passed down a level of superhuman or ultra human strength that Robbie and Mo have inherited but don't necessarily know about. It might be just borderline enough. It only, it, maybe it only comes out under really intense situations. It might, it, and it might be borderline enough, well, far enough within human tolerances that they've never noticed it. Maybe they, they're a little stronger than other children. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, may, maybe they, the Malto bloodline has some way of suppressing it and exposure to the Transformers made that suppression rub off. But anyway, that's the one theory. The other theory is this is, after all, a Transformers series. And this is just all bundled into... The one great leap away from reality that we, the audience, have accepted with Transformers. Physics, mass, volume, doesn't really matter. So tell me what you think, my wonderful viewers. Has, does the Malto bloodline produce the occasional John Henry? Someone with superhuman strength that's just on the edge of what is possible for a human to be? Or are we just looking at a Transformers franchise playing fast and loose with the laws of physics. Hit that like and subscribe button. Go check out my book, Humans Are Weird. I have the data available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. And peace out, my wonderful viewers.